It's NCAA tournament time here in Pullman. We'll get you ready for the first round matchup in Boiler Gym later today. And WCU and Oregon State have come to a scheduling agreement with the Mountain West Conference. We'll let you know what WCU's football schedule could look like coming next fall. Coming up next. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Monique Ledesma. And I'm Maggie Tolleson. Welcome to Murrow News 8. The worry for many Cook fans over the future of Cougar football and who they will be playing in 2024 has partially been answered. Washington State and Oregon State have reached a scheduling agreement with the Mountain West Conference for the 2024 football season. As part of the agreement, WC will play six games versus Mountain West foes, playing three games at home and three on the road. WCU already scheduled Mountain West Conference teams San Diego State and San Jose State for 2024. WCU plans to announce a complete 2024 football schedule with any possible changes within the near future. And WCU Volleyball is hosting the first and second round matches for the NCAA tournament this weekend. We sent our reporter Brendan Jin out to, get to Bowler to get ready for the game. It's time for the NCAA Volleyball Tournament, and Washington State University will be hosting two matches right here later this afternoon. First up is Dayton taking on Pepperdine. First serve is at 4 p.m. Then the Cougs will play at 7 against Grand Canyon University, so make sure to come out to Bowler Gym and pack it out. I'll have more of these matchups later on in sports. Back to you guys at the desk. After the snow last night, the National Weather Service put out a winter weather advisory from 4 a.m. today to 4 p.m. tomorrow. If you're planning on going out, make sure you watch your step on stairs, sidewalks, and driveways since those may be icy. Here are some quick tips to drive in snowing, snowy conditions. Make sure every brake, turn, or acceleration is gentle and gradual. Look far ahead and allow more time and space for stopping and turning. If you feel yourself skidding or sliding, make sure you look where you want to go and point your wheels in that direction and ease up on the brakes. Plan ahead and carry extra supplies in your car. Ethan will give us the latest on this winter weather. With snow making an appearance now, it, is, it is, has made a significant appearance over the last 24 hours. We have seen quite a few inches of snow, as you can see, right down by the football practice field. Can't even see the logos. There's that much snow out there right now, and that's going to continue here for the next few hours. But as we move, I'll have that full weather forecast for you later in the show. Well, thank you, Ethan. With snow making an appearance this December 1st, some W students were all here for it but not all were fans of this wintry weather. I was excited. I was looking at the weather forecast last night. I saw that it was going to snow, so I was super excited for that. Cold. I didn't want it to be cold. I don't like the snow. I don't like driving in the snow. Well, it was pretty nice. Uh, it's always fun seeing the snow. It means that skiing season is coming, so I get excited about that. Uh, today it wasn't so bad. It was uh, pretty much plowed everywhere and salted on the sidewalks just seeing it really like i don't know i feel like snow is like magical and it being december 1st and it's snowing i think it's just really cool definitely stop i hate driving in the snow and going out tonight i don't want to get uh i don't want to fall <laughs> if this snow was consistent then i would really like it coming up the downtown reconstruction project here in pullman is off to a slow start we'll tell you why after the break They took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Find her. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. 
Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> What is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> WSU and the American University of Armenia signed a m memorandum of understanding to establish a Center for Excellence in Journalism and create a new master's program in journalism education. The Center for Excellence in Journalism will serve as a hub for journalism education and leadership in research, training, best practices, and collaboration. The center will also offer professional development programs serving the wider co media community. The $1.3 million four-year university partnership initiative is funded by the U.S. Embassy in Yerevan. In addition to the journalism program, the embassy also announced an award to the American University of Armenia to establish a two-year English program for journalists and their professional needs. The city of Pullman is at a crossroad after no contractors bid on the project downtown Pullman. Of, of, uh, officials were planning on spending up to $9 million on the project to renovate the sidewalks and underground infrastructure of Main Street. The project has had many holdups as residents expressed concern for the trees currently on Main Street. Officials are now trying to find out why nobody bid on the job. Bids were supposed to be opened yesterday. The new Pullman Moscow Airport is nearly ready to take off. To celebrate the progress of the $90 million project that's also 49,000 square feet, the airport will host a ribbon cutting at the new terminal at 11 a.m. this Saturday. Washington Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers and Washington State University Chancellor Elizabeth Chilton, along with University of Idaho President Scott Green, are set to attend the celebration. The Teton County Sheriff's Office is looking for a 10-month-old missing from his home in Victor, Idaho, just east of Idaho Falls. Police say that Zeke Best was abducted from his home by his biological father, Jeremy Best. Jeremy Best is a 5'11", is 5'11", weighs 245 pounds, has brown hair, green eyes, and a graying beard. Police say he is driving a 1995 black Chevy Tahoe with Idaho plate 1T39349, and that Best is known to be heavily armed. If you see him or know where he might be headed, call 911 or the Teton County Sheriff's Office at 208-354-2323. The House voted to expel Congressman George Santos of New York after a critical ethics report on his conduct. They accused him of converting campaign donations for his own use. He was just the sixth member in the chamber's history to be expelled by, the co by colleagues. The vote to expel was 311 to 114. Expulsion requires support from two-thirds of the House. Santos fought the expulsion effort leading up to the vote by leading his own defense during the House floor debate. Well, it seems that winter is finally here on the Palouse after last night's snowfall coming up. Ethan will let you know what to look out for as we move on into this weekend. And we'll give you a look at some of the events going on in the Pullman Moscow area this weekend next. You're looking at me in the future. Okay. Hi, Isaac. Hi. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. This is Jaina. It's the future. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls. Oh, yeah. Do you remember it was this girl that I was getting bullied by that one day at PE when they were, like, yelling at me? And then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much, like, that helped me. Because, like, I finally, like, knew that I had somebody. Because of you, Isaac, and what you did for me, Years ago, I grew up to be more independent and love myself and just be a little bit more confident. Aww, <laughs> I'm like a little tearing up right now. Just to see her in the future, just blossom and look beautiful, and that was really amazing. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Hey guys, today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Que 
kisses. Give kisses. Look. Give kisses. Give kisses. You heard how loud that was. I know. I heard. That. I heard. It, 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 it wasn't you. Yeah. It was the. Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Bacon. In community holiday cheer, Alternative Surveillance on the Plus is holding a gingerbread fundraiser today from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at 1912 Center in Moscow. The event includes raffle baskets, music, complimentary treats, and a chance to view gingerbread houses for auction. The tickets cost $25 at the door. With finals right around the corner, if you're looking for a way to de-stress, ASWSU is hosting some events for you. The first event began today that ends at 1 p.m. You can go to the Cub Spine and grab yourself some nice and warm hot cocoa for this cold snowy weather. Along with this, students will have the opportunity to enter into a giveaway to win free AirPods. But if you're unable to grab some free hot cocoa today, ASWC will also be handing out some next Thursday outside the Tarot Mall from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you're a fan of robotics, the Crimson Bot Brawl is uh, uh, tomorrow from at 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Spark. The Crimson Bot Brawl is a combat robotics competition featuring three-pound beetle weight robots. This, these bots will battle it out throughout the day to determine the ultimate champion. Our reporter Luke Sorensen gives us an inside of a local robotics club here in Pullman. <laughs> Robots are taking over the Palouse, but not like the ones seen in the Matrix. Rather, these robots are taking over the imaginations of students in the new Pullman facility hosting Team 4061, part cyborgs. One of the coolest things about this robotics team is it's not just one school. Pullman High School senior Ted Norton is in his fourth year on the team, leading the mechanical division, hoping to pass down his knowledge and experience. I think the most important part is just teaching them how to like use tools properly. Team member Ruby Johnson Lung shared her experience of what the team means to her. A lot of it is just about kids getting to learn about science and technology no matter what their skill level is when they enter the program. In first robotics competition, teams have just six weeks to design, build, program, and test a robot just like this one. This gives students the opportunity to learn skills in STEM that they can take to their academic and professional career. Head mentor Benjamin Herman helps lead the team, engaging young minds in STEM-related discussions as the team prepares prepares for its 12th season. Students are um, getting lots and lots of good experience. Students are learning CAD, they're learning how to design and build wiring harnesses, they're learning you know, how to actually go and manufacture parts, they're learning the business side of things too, and, and really building both technical skills as well as soft skills. From there, students are, are moving into you know, actual internships and jobs. Ted and Ruby say they're taking a lot away from their experience as they head into the next season of life. So I am Trying to go to college for mechanical engineering first, robotics has really helped me gain more skills that I can apply later on. Since about middle school, I've thought about doing engineering, but because of this program, I've definitely narrowed it down to I want to do something that's team focused. I'm thinking probably aerospace engineering. Even if the robots don't come to life until the season starts next January, the STEM community at Part Cyborgs is already off to a lively start. Reporting in Pullman, Luke Sorensen, Murrow News 8. WSU will be hosting a free concert tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Bryan Hall on campus. The concert will include WSU Choral Ensemble, WSU Symphony Orchestra, and selected student chamber ensembles. There will also be a silent auction at the event. Festival Dance is hosting Ballet Victoria to perform the Nutcracker this weekend. Shows are on Saturday at 2 and 6 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. in the Hart Hardung Theater in the University of Idaho. Tickets are $40 and are available online. Well, Maggie, we've seen the first snowfalls of December, and I hope it stops there. I'm not a fan of snow. That's why I came into class with a blank today. <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems like we kind of forgot how to drive in snow once the first, first snow of the season kicks in. We're kind of like, whoa, what do we do? 
But uh, Ethan, is this snow going to stick around? Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Monique. Yeah, no, that snow, when you're heading out the door this morning, it was there and it was falling all night long. December, it was today being December 1st, it did welcome us with a lot of snow. As you can see today, uh, around 32 degrees, that freezing temperature. So that snow is falling and it, uh, it's going to be continuing. Let's take a look at tomorrow as that snow is going to continue. Temperatures are going to rise a little bit, but the snow is going to continue to fall. It's going to be starting around 4 a.m. tomorrow and last just a few hours, so it shouldn't be affecting the afternoon. But let's take a look at the statewide map. Our friends over on the west side of the state, Olympia and Seattle, haven't seen any snow. Those a little bit closer to the 50 degree temperatures and they've seen some rain. But then let's go towards the middle of the state, Yakima and the Tri-Cities. They saw some snow earlier this morning and but that has kind of stopped a little bit as we moved later into the afternoon. But over in Spokane up north, they've seen quite a bit more snow than we have. And then down in Pullman, of course, when you're heading out the door, you saw a lot of snow. So let's take a look at the five day forecast as tomorrow, as I said, there's going to be a lot of snow Sunday rain and uh, Monday rain. And then Tuesday, we're going to see rain again and it's going to continue and then we're going to start to see a little bit more snow later into that week but we'll have that later for you next week but that'll do it for me over at weather back to you guys at the desk thanks Ethan. it's tournament time here in pullman as we take a look here at bowler gym from earlier today brendan will give you the preview for the cougs matchup tonight against grand canyon and Cougar basketball has been on a roll as of late. We'll hear from Coach Kyle Smith and star guard Miles Rice about their upcoming matchup tomorrow afternoon next. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. The NCAA Volleyball Tournament is here on the Palouse, and Washington State University will be taking on Grand Canyon University tonight at 7 p.m. in Bowler Gym. This is WSU's eighth straight tournament appearance, and the last time the Cougs hosted the first round of the tournament was in 2018 when they made a run to the Sweet 16. We're super excited we get to host the first two rounds, and especially since, you know, we know that Baller gets really packed, gets really loud, and I think it's going to be a huge home court advantage for us. Um, Grand Canyon, they're great. Uh, they play incredible defense. Their outside hitter, uh, Parrot, is, is really, really good. Um, you know, we've, of course, played um, against, you know, a lot of teams that have, you know, kind of maybe one really good outside hitter, but we, we have to serve tough. And we have to um, do a good job passing um, so that we can run our offense how we can. The Cougs experience should play a major role in tonight's matchup. 
against Grand Canyon tonight because this is their first ever NCAA tournament appearance, while WSU has multiple players with multiple NCAA appearances. WSU enters the tournament as a four seed, which gives them the ability to host the first and second round in their portion of the bracket. The winners of the two matches tonight will face off tomorrow in Buller Gym at 7 p.m. Then, if the Cougs win both matches and make it to the Sweet 16, they will travel to the school with the highest remaining seed to play, which would be either Pitt, Louisville, or Creighton. If WSU is the highest remaining seed by the Sweet 16, they will once again be able to host in Buller Gym. You know, to be here in Pullman and be home and, you know, NCAA travel is crazy. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, the past years, like you get on a plane and you don't even know what airline you're on. Sometimes half, half the team could be on one flight and half is on another. The Cougs will face off against UC Davis tonight in Beasley Coliseum. Tip-off is at 4 p.m. and the Cougs are currently 8-1 and one on the season and are coming off a major win against Texas A&M Commerce, where WSU scored 111 points. The team was led in scoring by Bella Muricatete and Eleonora Villa. Three Cougs recorded a double-double, including All-American guards Charlize Ledger-Walker, Bella Muricatete, and Asteria Tuhina. The Cougs are looking to continue this energy into tonight's matchup. And I think this was a great example of spreading the ball around and getting, getting a lot of people different looks and, and keeping the defense moving and in spin cycles. For and for the men's basketball team, their season is off to the best start in the Kyle Smith era, ranking top 20 in the nation in two-point field goal percentage. The team is er, gearing up for their next contest tomorrow afternoon versus 6-1 Portland State Vikings. The men's basketball team is off to a blistering start at 5-1. They continue their five-game homestand tomorrow when they take on 6-1. Portland State. You know what? They're, they got good depth. They got good strength. They're old. They're veteran. I think they returned nine guys off their team last year, and their two starters they added: uh, KJ Allen, who's a highly touted transfer from Texas Tech, and their point guard, who's had I think already hit two game winners. Thus far, the Cougs have been much improved on the offensive end, ranked top 50 in the country in offensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. That's starting with freshman guard Miles Rice, whose confidence has been key to his success. But it always comes back to taking your shot. If you're, if you're taking your shot, you should be comfortable taking your shot, no matter if it's the first minute in the game, last minute in the game, or say if you miss three in a row, you gotta have the same confidence because you gotta, whether you're making three in a row or you're missing three in a row, you gotta shoot the next one regardless. Now the Cougs will take on the Vikings at 2 p.m. tomorrow in Beasley Coliseum. Reporting in Pullman, Ethan Kramer, Murrow News 8. In football news for Washington State, a couple of Cougar stars on the offensive end have announced their transfer and they will be entering the transfer portal, including quarterback Cam Ward and top wide receiver Josh Kelly. Ward has spent the past two seasons as the quarterback for the Cougs and had a breakout year in 2023, throwing for over 3,700 yards and accounting for 33 total touchdowns. Ward was among the Heisman Trophy conversation in the beginning of the season and uh, meanwhile, Josh Kelly led the Cougs in receiving this year with 923 yards and eight receiving touchdowns. The transfer, transfer portal does not officially open until December 4th. However, both Cougs announced their departure from the program on social media. Later on tonight, the Oregon Ducks and Washington Huskies will battle it out for the Pac-12 championship in Las Vegas. The Ducks come into the game 11-1. They've now won six in a row and are ranked fifth in the country. For the Huskies, they finished the season undefeated and are ranked third in the nation. Oregon is looking for their first conference title since 2020, while the Huskies haven't taken home the title since 2018. The winner of tonight's game will have an inside track to being one of the four teams to make the college football playoff. Meanwhile, here on the Palouse, across the border, it's playoff time. The Idaho, Idaho Vandals will host their first FCS playoff game since 1993 against the Southern Illinois Sulkies on Saturday. The Vandals finished second in the Big Sky Conference this year with a record of 8-3. For Southern Illinois, they are one of six teams to make the playoffs from the Missouri Valley Conference and won their opening round against Nichols by a score of 35-3. Saturday's game is at 7 p.m. from the Kibbe Dome and will also be broadcasted on ESPN2. For the Seattle Seahawks, they took the field last night against the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday Night Football. The matchup was an offensive shootout and it was one of the most entertaining Thursday night games of the year, as neither team punted throughout the entire game. 
After the Seahawks took an eight point lead early in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys scored 14 straight and came away with the win by a score of 41 to 35. The Cowboys have now won 14 straight games at home and are 9-3, while the Seahawks have lost three straight and are now 6-6 six six on the year and are trailing the 49ers by three games. Well, it's that time of year. The Christmas season is here. We'll let you know how Armour News 18 prepares for the holidays after the break. Score going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face Okay, okay you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Well, guys, now that the calendar has officially flipped over to December, the Christmas season is officially here. You know what's perfect about going Christmas shopping? Sometimes stuff for buy one, get one free, so one for who you're giving a gift and one for me. That's yep. true. I heard someone knows someone that wants Legos. Yeah, no, I, I specifically know someone brought this up earlier today <laughs> that they are a big Lego fan at the end of the table over there. Yeah, go ahead and hate on it all you want. You know, Legos are known for being a Christmas present. They're fun to do. You could do it as a family, by yourself, you know. <laughs> Hate on it all you want, but I'm going to buy myself a Lego set this year, and I will build it. So you're I treating yourself? Oh, you're treating yourself. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I maybe. Like I don't know. that the purpose of Christmas if you're just buying your yourself Lego gifts. Set. Okay, then, sure. Ethan, please. Austin and I will get your Lego Please, set. combine well, and I'll actually, I'll we'll build it. On, we'll build it right here. <laughs> we'll do it as, you know, you know at what? the end of one of the shows. Maybe we should do, like, a Christmas exchange between the... Yeah. Us here. here we go. Yeah. yeah, that might be worth it. Because oh, I do need to go out and get some gifts. I have not done that. Easy, easy gift. <laughs> so, what kind of Legos are you into, though? Are they like Marvel? Like well, you guys act like I just built Legos. <laughs> 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 I just said one thing that I wanted Legos. I mean, I guess if anything, it would be Star Wars. Star Wars would be the the ideal Lego set. You know, nothing beats that. Ethan, what's on your Christmas list, if not Legos? Oh, well, my Christmas list? I haven't really thought of what I want yet. I'm not, very <laughs> I'm not a very picky person to, like, get a gift for, so, um, All right, I well, don't know. You, you prepare for that, and <laughs> uh, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a great day.